In this episode, I think you know what time it is. Oh, oh I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. It's time for Fistful of Joes. Reloaded. So, stick around. and Dorkettes and Joe fans, and welcome to another episode of Fistful of Joes Reloaded. My name is Rob, and this is the show where I take my plastic totes full of G.I. Joe figures, I reach my hand in, grab a fistful of them, and we take a look at them, talk about them, kind of review them, and just have a good time while doing it. Honestly, this is just an excuse for me to get my toys out, play with them, and take a look at what I have. So anyway, without further ado, let's see what the fates have in store for us this evening. Okay, our first figure is Thrasher that came with the Thunder Machine. Now, this Dreadnought figure is... I mean, he's pretty awesome. I really wish I had the vehicle. I never had it, but I was able to find this guy at a flea market. Really cheap price. Unfortunately, he's missing his awesome, like, lacrosse stick with spiked ball weapon. But, I mean, all in all, it's still a great figure. I mean, he's in pretty decent shape. Let's see if we can do this without... Yeah, the shadows are pretty bad, so let me take the camera into the light box a little bit more I mean good detailing on the face I love the colored streaks in his hair his armor you know it's very reminiscent of a football uh, padding rip shirt now some of these paint application errors I think were original I don't think it was scraped off at all But, I mean, just very much in the theme of, you know, the Mad Max-esque uh, Dreadnought type of character that we would see very much so with Road Pig. But, I mean, it's a... Oh, he's drunk, drinking too much grape soda. But, I mean... He doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles because he's a vehicle driver, but, I mean, they did a really good job. The pouches here on the side look pretty good. His belt buckle with studs. I mean, there's some wear here on the silver paint applications, which you see a lot of, unfortunately. But, yeah, he's in pretty good shape. I mean, I'm happy to have him. Like I said, I wish I have had the vehicle as well, but... I mean, at the end of the day, I'm still happy enough to have him. So, I mean, don't really have a lot to look at with him. So, yeah, let's get on to the next character, shall we? Our next figure is the 25th anniversary version of Rock and Roll. Of course, they renamed him Sergeant Rock and Roll for some reason. I, yeah, I can't stand that, but I'm sure they have legal reasons or something silly. Anyway, here he is all geared up, and we'll break down everything that he has here. And take the camera a little bit closer here. I mean, first things first, you see that he has his iconic uh, dual ammo belts across his chest. We have a great callback to the original Hasbro House logo belt buckles that the OG Joes had. Helmet comes off. Great face sculpt. I think a little bit more red you have an ob1 but i mean 
it's very basic because it's taken from the OG 82 style. And I'm going to say first things first before we take a look at his machine gun. His hand, I had a hard time fitting the large handle of the machine gun in. It just, the size, the awkward size of it, just how his hand is molded, how I always worry that I'm going to break the wrist joints, because, I mean, look at that, it's spaced out. Anyway, all those things combined, I didn't have the best of times uh, posing him with his machine gun. He comes with a knife here on the side. Very cool. I love that the 25th anniversary did stuff like that. Because back in the day, we just had to pretend. Because that stuff that was molded on them, you couldn't take off. So, you just had to pretend. At least I did. Like Wild Bill's six shooters, you'd pretend that he would grab for them. But, that might be a little too extreme close up here. But... Like I said, he comes with this big machine gun, which comes with a very updated bipod, not that little thing that the original came with. So it can go down like that. Very nice. Comes with a helmet, like you saw, and he comes with an extra belt of bullets that fit into the machine gun, which is a really nice touch. The only thing I wish was that these weren't as rigid, that you could kind of, you know, go with the Rambo thing and put it around his forearm. But it's very rigid and not very poseable for things like that. But it looks cool hanging off there. And of course, like all 25th anniversary figures, it comes with a stand with his name on it. So, I mean, I'm very happy. Rock and Roll was one of my original Joes that I had back in the day. I'd love to get the original in my collection again, but, I mean, this is a great version to have, the 25th anniversary. So, it kind of, you know, quenches that f collecting fire that I have of, you know, completing collection, you know, the OG collection, because, I mean, he in a pinch, he works. So... Yeah, there we go. That was rock and roll. And yeah, these I think come off. Maybe. I don't know. With how they did some of this molding. I mean, it's pretty cool. You can see like buckles. That's great molding on there. Oh, sorry. Cat hair everywhere. But um, yeah, I feel like if you try to separate the seams here, you're going to break it. So, that'll be how he remains. Sorry, I didn't mean to focus on his butt there. But anyway, here was Rock and Roll, and let's get to the next Joe of Randomness. Our next figure is, hands down, one of my favorites growing up. This is the Battle Armor Cobra Commander. Now, I never had any of the original Cobra Commanders before this, with the hood or the mask. This was my first Cobra Commander, and I was so excited for it. The storyline in the comic was just so interesting, and... Honestly, I know there's sticklers out there that say this isn't Cobra Commander at all. It's actually Fred, but enough of that malarkey. This is Cobra Commander, and I am happy to report that I was able to find one at a you know flea market complete. And I can venture to say I probably didn't spend a lot of money on it at the time. I mean, the thing that you always see missing is 
this breathing tube here. If that's what it's supposed to be, that's what I think it's supposed to be. Sorry if that was blurry. And he has his gun and his backpack. So, a complete armored Cobra Commander. And, yeah, like I said, he was my first Cobra Commander, so he was my only Cobra Commander. He was the one that led the Cobra troops in my, you know, living room playtime universe. And, I mean, they did a good job. I mean... It looks like great armor. I love the color of blue. It pops. And it's vastly different. It's not the dark blues that we were known to see in the Cobra Forces. He has a Cobra logo, belt buckle, a little bit of paint wear there. Now, these indentations here, I never knew what they were supposed to be. So, I just always imagined that they were just where bullets have ricocheted off his awesome armor. And I don't know exactly what this was supposed to be, but I always just imagined it to be a jetpack that helped him fly around. Maybe it was supposed to be. I don't know, but that's what I pretended it was nonetheless. So, like I said, he's complete with his hose here. Very piercing eyes. I'm sorry my nails are dirty, I just noticed. But nice little gun you know futuristic which fits the whole battle armor thingamajig but also just very down to earth at the same time he's in really good shape for his age I mean the o-ring seems to be holding up his joints as you can see are holding up he's not wobbly at all the Cobra logo on the top of his helmet here looks really good yeah I mean very happy to have this figure one of the it's like one of those ones that I forget that I have until sorry it's blurry there we go until times like this where I'm able to dig them out and play with them a little bit I also just realized I don't have my figure stand like I usually do so that's why I'm having to hold him up, because if not, he would just fall over. But yeah, very cool figure. Very glad that I have him complete. And yeah, he's, he's pretty special to me. So yeah, we're going to leave it at that and on to the next random G.I. Joe figure. Our next figure, Speak of the Devil, is a Crimson Guard figure that is a Fred. Um, this actually came in a 25th anniversary comic pack. I don't remember who he came packaged with. We'll, you know, I will of course throw that info up at the little info card uh, before this part, so you'll know before I do. Um, but I mean. <laughs> Like I said, speak of the devil. What a stroke of luck that we actually get a Fred figure when we're speaking about the armored Cobra Commander. Like I said, a lot of people, you know, say, it's not really Cobra Commander, it's Fred. So, here's Fred. It's a nice face sculpt. And he, he has his gear all on. His backpack's a little crooked, but here's his backpack. I have him holding his helmet. We'll put it on in a second. He has a 357 holstered here. I wish it was a little bit better of a holster and accommodated for the large cylinder of the pistol. So it just kind of hangs there. And here it comes with a base like all the 25th anniversary. We'll throw that to the side. But I mean very nice sculpting. I like the metals here. I mean, silver paint looks great. Uh, the, uh, oh, what is the word for it? Oh, whatever. But his emplets and that thing, and 
Yeah, the only thing I don't like is that he comes with like this old school, what is it, like an M1 rifle. I wish it would have came with, you know, the bayoneted machine gun, like his original figure. But here, let's put the helmet on. And I think I've made a comment about it in a past episode that I wish they would have included like a turtleneck of sorts because once you put his helmet on you can still see his neck sorry for blurriness so I don't like that I wish they would have you know done a little bit more detailing there you know to hide the skin I know that's just a silly little gripe of my own but here we have the backpack nice cobra symbol on it reminiscent of the old one with its shape and size and color and other than you know my my biggest problem with these figures the weak joints that I'm always afraid I'm going to break them I mean this is a pretty solid figure and I also don't you know I one thing these are lacking as well is like the bulkiness of the torso of the original figures but I'm not hating because I always liked the Crimson Guard I mean I think everyone liked them but I never had any of the originals so getting this one and some of the other ones in my collection just makes me feel good that I actually have some sort of you know Crimson Guard in my ranks some detail in the helmet there. But yeah, I mean, I just wish they would have done something a little bit different with the neck. But that's just me. I mean, they do have the high collar here, so I give them props for that. But yeah, I wish it would have came with a different gun as well. But other than that, I love it. It's a great figure. And one that you can take the helmet on and off. So bonus points for that. Oh, and he came with his file card. Sorry. And it says here, each one is known as Fred to further enhance the group's uniformity and anonymity. So, boom. There we go. Fred. Crimson Guard. Next figure. Our last figure is the fan favorite, Quinn. Now, Tracker Quinn came in a comic pack um, in the early 2000s. I'll have to, you know, of course, throw it up on the info card, who he came with and all that good stuff. But you can see he comes with a large machine gun, very reminiscent of Roadblock's original one. He comes with a tripod. Sorry for the blurriness. There we go. He comes with one of his sled dogs. And this awesome machine gun that reminds me of uh, the one that came with Super Soldier. I'm sure he came, it came with other characters as well. But for some reason it stands out to me as the one that came with the uh, Silver Super Soldier character. If I'm getting that name correct. But he also comes with his weasel skull necklace that can be taken off. So if you don't have the Snake Eyes figure with this, you can share it with the Snake Eyes figure. But, I mean, it's a decent sculpt. I really like it. He has bandoliers crossing his chest his hood of his uh, parka is a separate piece so it can allow mobility of his head movement and it looks pretty cool I wish I mean it'd be for another line probably but a removable 
hood and hood down version like we see with the classified figures like the storm shadow and all but i mean nice color scheme very muted but very comic accurate colors not a lot of bells and whistles to his uniform i mean the parka looks pretty good with the detailing on it Sorry, I'm just playing with the hood here with the little gap there, but I can only see it on the camera, so all in all, it's not that big a deal. But I just, I love that they were releasing O-ring figures in the early 2000s that could have been in the original line, just like this character. I mean, he was like I said, a fan favorite from the comic book. And it's just great that he finally made his way to plastic in the O-ring scale and version. Now, they also did a 25th anniversary version of him, if I'm not mistaken, which is a little bit more because it's 25th anniversary, but this is perfect. It fills in that hole in the original run of having some of the comic book characters so, I mean, very happy that I have him, and like I said, I was a fan of his from the comic from the get-go, so really cool to have him finally in plastic and in my collection. So, yeah, not a lot to say other than great character, great figure in the OG O-ring style, and... He comes with a dog too you gotta love that i mean this is just a repaint of law or order order i guess a repaint of order to be all black but very cool sorry i messed up the name there so a little bit of classic a little bit of new a lot of awesome so anyway we're gonna head back to me and end it on quinn Okay, back to me. Honestly, I don't think I could have asked for a better pull than those five figures. We had G.I. Joe figures. We had Cobra figures. We had figures from the 80s, figures from the early 2000s. I mean, and everything in between. It, yeah, that's what I love. Just a little bit of everything when I grab that fistful and... Yeah, I'm very happy about which figures we looked at this evening. So, yeah, super psyched, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you got something to say, please leave a comment. I love reading them, and I love getting back to everybody. And if you're new around here and you enjoyed this or any of the episodes that YouTube is recommending down here, please hit subscribe. And if you hit that little bell icon, you will be notified whenever there's a new episode. So anyway, until next time, thank you for watching. Keep being rad, and stay dorky.